Well, last year's predictions got completely obliterated. Thanks a lot, virus. So I might as well make this a little disclaimer. So as of now, as of February 3rd, 2020, the day of filming, every single movie on this list is currently scheduled to be released this year. How you doing everybody? I am Jay Enterprise and this video is my predictions for the top 10 highest grossing films of 2021. Now when I say top grossing, I'm talking about the overall worldwide box office. <laughs> Now, this list was very interesting to make. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I originally intended to release this video in the beginning of January, and then a bunch of movies started getting delayed, and the you know once again the movie schedule started shuffling around. Uh, so I was like, okay, let me hold off for a couple weeks, let me monitor this for a little bit longer, and just see exactly where these movies are going to land. So. Here we are now in February. Um, also, to be honest, when I originally started coming up with this list, I told myself, don't overthink this, okay? Let's not overthink this list. Let's, let's pretend this is a normal year and these movies are being released under normal circumstances. So, you know, let's do that. Guess what the movies are gonna gross at the box office and, you know, keep it simple. But I, I couldn't, there's, I mean, to be, to be quite honest, there's just too many factors with the crazy times that we're, that we're in, too many factors to ignore. Um, I mean, you have this, the whole streaming factor. I mean, you have movies now that are being released exclusively on streaming services. Then you have movies being released on streaming services only in certain countries, then being released in theaters in other countries. Then you have the whole, you know, the whole Warner Brothers 2021 slate, which is doing the simultaneous release, being released on streaming uh, on HBO Max and being released in theaters on the same day. So there's just, again, like I, I didn't want to overthink it, but there were just too many factors I had to consider. Um, and then there's actually there's two movies that I originally had on my list, uh, Mission Impossible 7 and the Spider-Man Far From Home sequel, the uh, Spider-Man 3, the, the next Tom Holland MCU, Spider-Man, whatever you want to call it. Those films, I mean, I really thought that they were going to be on this list. Um, they're gonna, I mean, there's the Spider-Man film, which would be on the top 10 for any year, but that's just it. As of recording, as of this date, those two films, are, those two movies are still filming. Um, I mean, Mission Impossible 7 is supposed to come out in November, and the Spider-Man sequel is supposed to come out in December. So like, even, even if Spider-Man gets delayed only by one month, that still pushes it back into 2022. So it's tough because, again, I really believe those two movies should be on a top 10 list, but I'm kind of taking the chance, and I, as of right now, I really don't see them still being released this year just because, like I said, as of now, they're still filming. So I kept them off that list, taking a chance. We'll see how that works out. Uh, also, one more quick thing before we get into my list. I, um, I also didn't include any Asian films in my list, which is, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of taking a big chance there because I mean with last year just because Hollywood and the movie industry in general was just just thrown out of whack because of everything going on there was a lot of in fact the majority of last year's top 10 list had Asian films specifically Chinese films so and it's very possible that there are going to be some Asian films especially some Chinese films on this year's top 10 highest grossing list but to be perfectly honest I just don't know enough about the Asian movie market. I don't know enough about, and I don't know anything, to be honest, about any of the Asian movies being released. So I excluded them from this list. So we'll see how that works out too. Anyway, let's get on with it. Number 10 is Matrix, the fourth installment in the Matrix franchise. Uh, this movie actually wasn't on my list originally. When I was first drafting up the list a couple weeks ago, this movie was not on it, but as I had to make changes, as I had to take certain movies off my list because of, you know, circumstances, I, you know, I had to review all, you know, the, go through the entire list of movies being released this year in 2021 to try and, you know, fill up my list after I had to take some off. And I started thinking about The Matrix, and, and even though it's been almost 20 years, if you can believe that, it's been almost 20 years since the last Matrix movie, I really think this movie will actually benefit from the nostalgia factor. Um, you have to also take into consideration that Keanu Reeves is in a, I mean, he's in quite the career renaissance these past couple years. Uh, and I think that there will be a lot of, I, I already believe, I mean, here we are about 11 months out, and there is already some anticipation building for this movie, and I think it's gonna do pretty well. 
Therefore, it's on my list at number 10. Number nine is Dune. Now there is going to be a lot of hype surrounding this film, especially if Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures have anything to say about it. Obviously, they are the financers behind the film. Well, Legendary Pictures, they finance the majority of it. Warner Brothers are the distributors, but they are really banking on this film being a success because they want to launch a potential franchise out of it. You can't have a franchise without a successful first installment. Now, I do believe this film has a lot going for it. I mean, the director has really pushed for this film to be released in as many theaters as possible. Um, and it's just, he just believes that's the only way you can see it. I agree with that. Uh, it's supposed to be released in the fall. Hopefully there are a lot more theaters available when it is released. It's got an all-star cast, Zendaya, Dave Bautista, very good cast. You know, it has enough, in my opinion, to pique the interest and bring in the general audience which will really make or break the success of the film, as is the case with most blockbusters. So with that being said, Dune at number nine. Coming in at number eight is Godzilla vs. Kong, another Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures movie. This, as a matter of fact, is my most anticipated movie of the year. Uh, and originally, it was not on my list. Um, I didn't want to be biased as much as, much as I want this film to succeed. At first, I didn't really think that it would do well enough to make it to the top 10, especially considering it's being released next month. I mean, I don't see things changing too drastically for the better within the next, you know, month and a half. However, then the trailer came out and broke all sorts of records. Everybody's talking about Godzilla vs. Kong. There is a lot of hype and a lot of interest surrounding this film. Um, there's a lot of anticipation. Many people are saying that they're going to go see it in theaters. Um, and considering this is really the first blockbuster film that we're getting of 2021, I believe that will work in its favor as people who are willing to go to the theaters are really chomping at the bit to experience a movie such as this in a big screen like IMAX Dolby or just a big screen in general. I mean, this is the quintessential theater experience type movie and I do believe people are going to take advantage of that. Uh, and yeah, considering the hype that the trailer caused last month, I really believe that that was enough to uh, push this film into the realm of success. Personally, I'm hoping so. Uh, successful enough, as a matter of fact, to put it at my number eight. Number seven is Black Widow. Now, this is a controversial pick. For me personally, it's controversial. Controversial ranking, controversial pick, because let's be honest, if this was a normal year, Black Widow would be probably number one or number two. I mean, when it was actually, when it was supposed to be released originally last year, I had it at number two in my in my 2020 predictions. I had it at number two. I mean, this is, this is a billion dollar movie. Let's be honest, it's MCU, it's Black Widow, it's a character we've known and have been in love with for over 10 years now. People have been anticipating this film. A lot of people felt like Black Widow, myself included, felt like Black Widow should have gotten a solo movie years ago. And it's just a shame that it just had to get caught up in all this bullshit, you know, that we're experiencing right now. Um, and it's being released in May, May 7th. As of today, May 7th is when Black Widow is being released. I don't know if that's late enough in the year to really allow things to get back to a point where a lot of theaters will be open and a lot of people will be going to the theaters. If it was, if it was being released next year, or even if it was being released later on this year, I would rank it higher. But considering it's being released in May, just a couple months from now, I really think that's gonna hurt the box office, which is a shame because like I said, under normal circumstances, this would without a doubt be one of the top grossing films, if not the top grossing film of the year, over a billion, no doubt in my opinion, but hey, unfortunately that's not the world we're living in, so I have to put it at number seven. Another MCU film coming in at number six. I have Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Now it's, it's crazy to think that I'm ranking this above Black Widow, but just considering the circumstances of the year, I mean, I mean again, normal circumstances, Black Widow would rank above Shang-Chi in my opinion, but hey, that's not the world we're living in. It's 2021. The reason why I have it at number six is because I believe this movie is going to have a lot of international appeal, especially in China. China is the second largest movie, um, movie market in the world, and most Chinese theaters are open. 
Um, also considering the fact that this is coming out two months after Black Widow, uh, the world, hopefully, again, I'm banking on the world gradually getting a little bit better as the year progresses. So considering this film uh, is being released two months after Black Widow, I do believe that puts it at an advantage. Therefore, I'm putting it at number six. Number five. Ba -dum -ba -dum. 007 is back, the latest in the James Bond franchise, No Time to Die, and one of the films that was affected the most by everything that happened last year. It was originally supposed to release last April, April 2020. They practically, they, they pretty much finished their entire marketing campaign, got delayed multiple times, and here we are, 2021 it is currently scheduled to be released in October. Now the past couple James Bond films have done very well. The last one, which was Spectre, made over $800 million. The one before that, Skyfall, is the highest grossing James Bond film in history, made over a billion dollars. This potentially, and quite well possibly, the rumors are, spoiler alert, this is the last James Bond film that Daniel Craig will be in, therefore ending the whole the whole storyline, the whole arc that began with 2006's Casino Royale. So there's going to be a lot of anticipation regarding this film. Because of that, I'm putting it at number five. Coming in at number four, the sequel to 2018's Venom, Venom Let There Be Carnage. Uh, the first Venom was the kind of the, the surprise hit of 2018, did very well internationally. The sequel currently scheduled for June or June, June or July, June. So yeah, June. Let There Be Carnage scheduled for June, summer release. It's gonna do well internationally. Theaters, a lot more theaters are open internationally um, as opposed to here in the US. And again, hopefully things will be a little bit better when the summer comes. I think there's going to be a lot of anticipation for this movie. Uh, the first one was a big hit. Um, therefore, with the sequel, people are going to be very curious, very interested to see the sequel and how it may or may not connect with the MCU. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, regardless, I think this film is going to do very well, be another success for Sony's Spider-Verse, whatever you want to call it. So I'm placing it at number four. Minions, The Rise of Gru is my number three pick. Now, the Despicable Me franchise has been pretty divisive from a critical standpoint, but there is no denying the success of this franchise. This is a sequel to the 2015 Minions movie, which made over a billion dollars. This is also the fifth overall installment in the Despicable Me franchise. It was originally supposed to be released last July, now it's scheduled to be released this July, and it's my number three pick. Number two, another MCU film, Eternals, currently scheduled for November. Another film that was scheduled for last year, now coming out this year. A lot of films on this list were originally scheduled for last year. Anyway, this is another MCU film which I believe will benefit from an all-star cast and also benefit uh, with being released later on in the year. Once again, a recurring theme in this, this video, this list, I'm, I'm really counting on things getting better as the year progresses. The fact that this movie is an MCU film, it's being released in November. Hopefully more theaters will be open by that time. It's got an all-star cast. I'm gonna go see it just for Salma Hayek alone. Uh, <laughs> childhood crush. Uh, anyway, getting off track here, here we go. Yes, number two, Eternals. And coming in at my number one pick for the highest grossing film of 2021. As a matter of fact, it was also my number one pick in last year's prediction video because it was originally supposed to be released last year. But now, currently scheduled for May, my number one, F9. Fast 9, Fast and Furious 9, whatever the hell you want to call it. <laughs> These movies have a huge international appeal. The last couple films have made bank at the box office. Even a, a Hobbs and Shaw spin-off movie which came out a couple years ago made over $700 million. Still a very, very bankable franchise. Um, makes a lot of money internationally, and as we've discussed, as I've mentioned, the international box office, the international movie scene is doing a lot better than it is here in North America, so I do believe that is really going to play a big part in the overall success of this film. Therefore, just like last year, I'm putting it at my number one pick this year. Number one, 
And that's my predictions for the top 10 highest grossing films of the year of 2021. Number 10, Matrix. Number 9, Dune. 8, Godzilla vs. Kong. 7, Black Widow. 6, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Number 5, 007, No Time to Die. Number 4, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Number 3, Minions, The Rise of Gru. Number 2, Eternals. And my number 1 pick, Fast 9. Thanks a lot for watching. Now we're going to revisit this list next year, just see how well it holds up, you know, because last year's predictions got completely invalidated two months into the year, so <laughs> we'll definitely revisit this video, see how well my list has aged, but uh, let me know. I'm very curious. Let's get the conversation going. Let me know down below in the comments just what exactly, in your opinion, do you think will be the highest grossing films of the year, the most successful movies of 2021. Also, I'm very curious to know, let me know down below as well, what your most anticipated films are. I'm very curious to know which movies you're looking forward to the most this year. And if you were entertained by this video, I would really appreciate it if you showed your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing.